Hello, everyone. It's great to see you here and to be all together again to show our rage at apartheid Israel's crimes and to share our grief and our heartbreak at what is being done to our Palestinian sisters and brothers and to show again our unbreakable solidarity with the Palestinian people. We will never go away and we will never stop speaking out for Palestine. How can we even count all the massacres in Gaza since the last time we came together? The Rafa tent massacre, the Nusrat massacre, the schoolyard massacre, the Al Mawasi massacre, and all the daily mass murder perpetrated by Israel. We must mark and mourn them for their families and communities and for our shared humanity. We hold dear every single precious Palestinian life that was stolen in this mass killing. At least 40,000 people murdered, 90,000 injured. A study in The Lancet said that the death toll could reach more than 186,000 people. 90% of the population has been forcibly displaced multiple times. Huge numbers of people have been forced into Al Mawasi with no infrastructure. And this is Israel delegating some of its killing to disease and exposure. And we can see that bombing tents is even more lethal than bombing buildings. United Nations human rights experts have said Israel is carrying out a targeted starvation campaign that has resulted in the death of at least 35 children, a form of genocidal violence causing famine across all of Gaza. The old, the sick children are dying of hunger and dehydration. Polio virus has been found in the sewage. This is a crime for the ages. The forced starvation of a population, all while blocking food, medicine, aid, water. Every single Palestinian that dies in Gaza of malnutrition or disease has been murdered by Israel. Their genocide comes in many forms. The worst level of child malnutrition in the world, <clears throat> the biggest mass disabling event, the biggest cohort of child amputees ever, the highest death toll of journalists, the most UN workers ever killed, over 500 medics murdered, hundreds of medics detained, at least 9,240 Palestinian students killed, all UNRWA facilities destroyed, the most schools attacked, all the hospitals destroyed, 21,000 children missing, elderly women and the disabled set upon by military attack dogs, routine mass ex executions of families in their homes, people used as human shields, ecocide, domicide, scholasticide, genocide, and these are just the headlines. Each one of them a horrendous record, and each one of them a stain on an international community that includes the Irish government that enables, arms, and funds this. <clears throat> the destruction, displacement, pain, and trauma is unimaginable. Whole communities gone. <clears throat> Generations of families wiped out. The people will take decades to recover and Gaza will take decades to rebuild. All the little children with no one to mind them as they deal with catastrophic injuries and trauma. All the bereaved people with no space to grieve. All the frightened, exhausted, starving people. We have a duty of care to them to do everything we can to stop this genocide. None of this should be happening. It should all have been stopped on day one. Thousands of Palestinians have been incarcerated in Israeli dungeons and death camps where they are subjected to severe torture, sexual violence, starvation, held in shackles for months, not allowed to wash or to speak or to move. We have no idea how many people have been murdered in these prisons, but we do know of at least two Palestinian doctors from Gaza who were tortured to death, Dr. Iyad Rantisi and Dr. Adnan Al-Bursh. 
testimony from Israeli soldiers in Gaza shows an army free for all violence policy with soldiers shooting Palestinians for fun. They filmed themselves ransacking people's homes, desecrating mosques, blowing up buildings and hospitals, stealing and mocking Palestinians that they have most likely murdered. And they do it because they can. And if we weren't here today because of the genocide in Gaza, we would be here because of Israel's crimes in the West Bank. Since October, at least 553 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli forces and settlers there. 132 children have been murdered and over 9,000 people have been detained. The biggest land grab since Oslo in 1993 is underway with new colonies being built and the ethnic cleansing is constant. Refugee camps are under sustained attack and airstrikes are now regular in the West Bank. Palestinians all over are being dispossessed, incarcerated, terrorized and murdered by Israel. And we will never forget and we will never forgive the hypocrisy and the racism that sees media and politicians rightly condemn attacks on hospitals in Ukraine while having nothing to say about every single hospital in Gaza being bombed and destroyed. <laughs> about doctors tortured to death, patients murdered, mass graves, we will never forget that when Israeli forces murdered 274 Palestinians in one day in Nusrat refugee camp, that world leaders and media congratulated them on the rescue of four hostages. As if the Palestinians simply did not matter. Well, they do matter and they matter to us. We will never forget that the day after Israel murdered 31 people, many of them children, playing football at a UN school sheltering the displaced, that it was not even mentioned on RTE News. Media and politicians have allowed so many crimes to become normalized, but they are not normal and we will never allow them to become normalized. This genocide is a scar on all of us, all of our psyches, our hearts. It is a scar on humanity. And we are supposed to accept living in a world where some people matter more than others, where some lives are deemed worthy. We are supposed to accept living under systems and structures where the murder of Palestinians is allowed. Well, we refuse to accept that. We refuse to accept such a world and we will keep fighting to bring down these structures of racism because Palestinian lives count. The International Court of Justice is investigating Israel for genocide. The International Criminal Court will issue arrest warrants for Netanyahu and Gallant. A major UN investigation said that in Gaza, Israel is committing the crimes of extermination, murder, forcible transfer, torture, and gender persecution targeting Palestinian men and boys. The UN added Israel to the list of states committing violations against children. And yesterday, in a historic landmark ruling, the International Court of Justice found that the Israeli occupation of Palestine is illegal. <laughs> and states must act to end it. Are you listening, Irish government? Israel must end the occupation. It must remove the settlers. It must allow Palestinians to return to their homes. And it must pay reparations. And states and governments, including ours, cannot aid or enable this occupation. These are grave crimes and there are no more excuses. The Irish government must act now to sanction Israel. It is deeply shameful and wrong that for 76 years, Israel can commit so many egregious crimes with total impunity. 
And it is deeply shameful that our government still has done nothing, not one single thing that will impact Israel materially. <laughs> Fine Gael MEPs voted for Ursula von der Leyen. Our government celebrated the 4th of July with US dignitaries. But Simon Harris told us that we have to use all the levers at our disposal to stop this genocide. But his government is blocking every available lever and that is shameful. The Irish government must end all trade with apartheid Israel. They must end the arms trade. They must punish the crime of apartheid. They must enact the Occupied Territories Bill. They must enact the Illegal Israeli Settlement Divestment Bill. They must demand the suspension of the EU-Israel Trade Agreement. They must expel the Israeli ambassador. And they must get the US military out of Shannon. Our government is going against the will of the majority of people here who demand sanctions, and we have had enough. They recognize Palestine because of the huge street mobilization and the pressure that you all and we all put them under, but we will not be fobbed off with gestures and words. We demand concrete action. And we make them listen with our actions and with days like today. And we can't stop now and we won't stop now. The mask has completely slipped. The majority of the world, including people who are never aware, are seeing what Israel is and what Israel is doing and how complicit the international community, including Ireland, is in these crimes and they are acting on their consciences and boycotting and demanding divestment. The Israeli economy is in free fall. Investment is crashing. It turns out that genocide is expensive and boycott bites. Last month, Intel froze construction of a $25 billion factory in Israel. Barclays suspended its sponsorship of ma major music festivals. And well done to our brilliant Irish artists, CMAT and Pillow Queens, who pulled out of latitude because of Barclays sponsorship. And remember when all the Irish acts pulled out of South by Southwest Festival in Texas, well, that festival has now dropped its sponsorship from the US military and arms companies because of the artist boycott. Investing in apartheid has always been unethical and illegal, and now it is extremely risky. And BDS is unstoppable. When we last met, we were celebrating the achievement of the Trinity students. And since then, the UCD student encampment had a huge victory. UCC agreed to the student encampment demands. UL is in talks with ULBDS. Great work is being done by students and staff around the country. So up the students, you fight, you win. So keep boycotting. We have the living legends from the Dunn Store strikers who fought against South African apartheid. With us here today, and we have a proud tradition of boycott to uphold. So keep demanding action and sanctions. 
Next week, the Olympics start, and Israel will try to use it to sports watch its genocide. And we cannot have that. FIFA postponed today's meeting to decide on whether to ban Israel so that they can participate in the Olympics. Utterly shameful. We want Israel out of FIFA. Out of the UEFA. Out of the Olympics. Out of all international bodies. And look around you. Look at this beautiful solidarity. We are on the right side of history. We stand with the heroes of Palestine, of Gaza. We stand with the people who rebuild hospitals, who grow plants, who cook for each other, who teach and paint in tents, and dig each other out of the rubble, and stitch each other back together, and mind and love each other, and who maintain their dignity in the face of all this horror. Last week, Yahya Ashur, a writer from Gaza, said, don't look for hope in my words. Give me hope with your actions. And that is what we have to do. No more shredded bodies. No more broken people. No more apartheid. No more genocide. We stand together in solidarity, in love, for liberation, for freedom, for justice for equality, for Palestine, and for all of us. From the streets of Dublin, from our community of solidarity, we send our love to our Palestinian sisters and brothers in Gaza, in 48, in the West Bank, in the refugee camps, in exile, in Ireland. We will see you in a free Palestine. Free from walls and apartheid. In a beautiful, rebuilt Gaza. As the refugees return home and the prisoners walk free. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. And then we will all be free. Free Palestine. <laughs>